During World War I, the concept of strategic bombing had been recognized, although at the time, there were large bombers capable of carrying a single one-ton aerial bomb, which were not strong in terms of maximum range, flight performance, and self-defense capabilities, and therefore could not be called strategic bombers. In the early 1930s, the U.S. Army Air Corps initiated the D plan, which was a technological experiment to see if a heavy bomber with a range of 5,000 miles, approximately 8,000 kilometers, could be developed, which would be a true strategic bomber. Many companies participated in this plan, among which the design by Douglas was named XBLR-2, later changed to XB-19. Perhaps not well known today, it was a big star at the time, and was the world's largest bomber before the appearance of the Convair B-36, excluding aircraft designs that were never actually built. The XB-19 was huge, with an empty weight of up to 43,000 kilograms, a length of 40.34 meters, a height of 12.8 meters, and a wingspan of 64.62 meters. It was designed in 1935 and first flew in 1941, and its appearance was somewhat similar to large bombers such as the B-17. For the designers at the time, it was not easy to design such a huge bomber. Douglas requested to terminate the project in 1938 but was not approved. Keeping the project of this large aircraft confidential was also very difficult, as it was challenging to control the news of the assembly of such a large aircraft in the factory. Initially, the designers planned to install four Allison 15-3420-1 engines as power, each producing 1600 horsepower, driving a pair of 5.18-meter diameter three-blade constant speed metal propellers, but later were forced to change to Wright R3350 engines, which could each output 2000 horsepower, but added a lot of workload. The main wing had a low monoplane structure, with a certain amount of sweep on the leading edge and a straight trailing edge, thick wing profile, internal passageways, allowing mechanics to approach the engines and perform maintenance during flight. To meet the needs of long-range flight, the total volume of the fuel tanks inside the aircraft reached 10,350 gallons, and auxiliary fuel tanks with a volume of 824 gallons could also be installed in the bomb bay. With the use of the auxiliary fuel tanks, the maximum range of the XB-19 exceeded 7,000 miles, 11,265 kilometers. The aircraft could reach a maximum speed of 360 kilometers per hour, a cruising speed of 217 kilometers per hour, a maximum altitude of 7,000 meters, and a climb rate of 3.3 meters per second. Long range also meant prolonged loiter time. The aircraft was designed to accommodate a crew of 16, with an additional two flight engineers and six rescue personnel. In addition to spacious and comfortable workstations, the aircraft also provided facilities such as eight rest seats and six beds. The XB-19 used a retractable tricycle landing gear, with the nose gear located under the front of the aircraft and the main gear mounted under the wings. The main gear was of a single-wheel structure, with tires much taller than an adult. As a bomber, the weapon mounting capability was an important indicator for the XB-19. The aircraft mainly used internal bomb bays, where it could carry 8,500 kilograms of bombs. If the range was sacrificed to add external bomb racks, the total bomb load could be increased to 16,800 kilograms. Self-defense weapons were not initially considered for the XB-19, but were later added. The designers planned to install a 37mm cannon in the nose turret and a Browning M1919 machine gun, 7.62mm caliber, in the tail turret, as well as installing power turrets on the dorsal and ventral sides and M2 machine guns, 12.7mm caliber, on the sides of the aircraft for a total of two 37mm cannons, five 12.7mm machine guns, and six M1919 machine guns. During flight testing, some issues were discovered with the XB-19, such as problems with the brake system. After modifications, it was accepted by the military. However, it was more of a technical exploration and was far behind the large bombers equipped by the US Air Corps at the time, 
and those under development, and was not suitable for mass production and deployment. This prototype aircraft was later stripped of its weapons and converted into a cargo plane, and was scrapped and dismantled in 1949. The XB-19 played a crucial role in the development of U.S. bombers. At the time, Douglas engineers installed a large number of strained gauges on the aircraft to record the loads on various components during flight, accumulating a large amount of data for the construction of large aircraft. Many of the later large bombers designed and built in the United States benefited from this.